Hey, Stitch fam. Hope everybody is out there doing okay. My name is Corinne. You have found my channel, Corey Creates, where I primarily talk about cross stitch, sewing and quilting, as well as gardening and any other things creative that I get into. Um, welcome back to those of you who have been here before and thank you and welcome to my new subscribers. Uh, today's date is Sunday, November 13th, 2022, and this is floss tube number seven. So glad to be back before you. Fall is definitely in full swing here in St. Louis. Um, I saw a meme yesterday on Facebook where it said that Mother Nature is throwing out temperatures like Powerball numbers. Okay, and I have to wholeheartedly agree. For those of you that live in Missouri, you know how it is. You wait long enough, the temperature is going to change. Today, it's like in the low 40s, I believe. Yesterday, it didn't even make it to 40. Last weekend, we were in the 80s. Okay, I had shorts on. Got in the house from work and put some shorts on. Okay, that's, that's what we have been dealing with. Definitely swinging back and forth, um, but it's very chilly now. And my motto is by the time we make it to November, pick a season, okay? It's November, I've accepted that fall has come. Um, just a busy time, this time of year as I'm sure it is for all of you all, but it is birthday season here in the person household. Uh, my husband had his birthday the day before Halloween, my dad's birthday, my son's birthday, my birthday, and I also have two sisters. I have stepbrothers. I have a niece, tons of birthdays during the month of November. Um, Trent's, I think, is this coming week. And we just, that's, it's just birthday season around here. Um, what else? My husband and I uh, celebrated our 19th wedding anniversary uh, last week. I'll pop a picture in of us on our wedding day. And if I can find it, I'll pop a picture in of the flowers he had sent to me at work. So 19 years being married to the one God made for me. And uh, we always enjoy each other. We don't do a whole lot. You know, we marry with kids, um, but we, we, get, we go out on date nights occasionally throughout the year but because november is so busy we usually uh don't do a whole lot for our anniversary we usually save it for like summer or whatever when the weather's a little nicer so that's what's going on around here just busy um this time of year also catering spikes for me um i think i've already had two um, events. I think about 60 people each, a baby shower, and then just a celebration that they needed appetizers for. And then I've got another one coming up, a holiday party coming up the first weekend in December. And then I've got a couple other possibilities. Plus I normally make cakes and things and some side dishes and things for people during the holidays. So I'm in the throes of that, but this, I had a weekend off. Um, so I wanted to make sure I got a chance to come and talk to you all for a little bit. Um, so what am I going to talk about today? I just have a short stitching update. I have one quilt that I want to share with you. Um, some new starts that I have kitted up and the homecoming dress. Uh, homecoming was last weekend. So I do have the completed homecoming dress for my daughter to share with you, but I'll do that close to the end of the video. So let's get started. Um, I did have one question. A lot of you commented on my daughter helping me show the quilts and she's going to help me show the one I have today because it is also a bed size quilt. But some of, I had one person ask me, does Layla stitch? No. Okay. <laughs> she does not, no interest whatsoever. Um, that's not to say it couldn't change, but unfortunately, my one girl isn't interested. Now my son, he wants to make all the things. Uh, so I try to, you know, give him a few lessons here and there. 
on different things. But no, she doesn't. And but again, that's not to say that couldn't change when she gets grown. I've seen I've heard a lot of floss tubers say they weren't interested when they were younger. And then as they got older, they uh, got more interested in it. So I'm kind of hoping that will be the case with her. Um, one other update, the box that I showed you all on my last video. I had a couple of people, particularly Lucy Mitchell and Valerie S. And I believe a couple other people also mentioned it as well. It is called, and hopefully I'm saying it correctly, an etui box. So thank you to you, those of you who shared that with me and let me know what the name of that box was. And somebody even said that you can find uh, kits or patterns for those on Etsy. So I haven't had a chance to look up any of them, but I am interested. I would love to look into what is it entails to make another one. So thank you for that. Um, so let's just jump into whips. Um, I have three. Well, actually, I'm sorry. I have two whips and a finish. Okay, so let's start with the finish. We'll go with that one first. This is, of course, baked goods which I have shown many times before. I'll insert a picture here of what it looked like last time. And here is the final product. And as I was getting ready, I realized I need to add the beads. So I added the beads on the cupcake. And they are just some little beads I got from Michaels, which I'll show you in just a second. But this is Baked Goods by Little House Needleworks. And am I the only one that did not know that Little House Needleworks and Country Cottage Needleworks were mother and daughter? I'm probably the last to know. I don't even remember where I read it recently. I think it was at the bottom of one of their websites. How could I now know that? And why is that not surprising? Um, I like so many of their patterns. But this is baked goods. I am going to finish it as a pillow, I believe. but it turned out well. I liked it, I enjoyed it, and hopefully next time I will have a finish to show you, a fully finish. But let me show you the beads I got. Um, I told you all, those are supposed to be French knots. I don't fool with French knots unless I absolutely have to. So I just, I wanted just some brown seed beads, but I couldn't find any of those little containers of just brown. So I picked up these, they're Czech, seed beads um 10 slash zero is the number of the size but they're seed beads they're small but those dark ones those are the ones i used on baked goods and they blended in really nicely um i tried to use a beading needle but i guess you got to have really thin thread to use that so I just ended up using a quilting sharp needle, I believe size 10. I keep a lot of those in my um, sewing kit. So that's just what I use and the beads fit over it just fine. Um, so that is Baked Goods by Little House Needleworks. And I got, I have some walnut shells that I'm gonna use in the bottom of the pillow and then do the rest with fiber fill probably. Um, I'm experimenting right now with a lot of different fillings. The walnut shells, fiber fill, uh, sawdust, and even a little sand um, in combination with some of those. So I'm just kind of playing around with which ones I like best. So like I said, hopefully before the end of the year, I will FFO a number of these things, the smalls that I have finished. Um, up next is Annie's Market. This was out of a cross stitch magazine and i'll tell you in just a second which one i didn't write it down october 2004 of just cross stitch but this is what the model looked like in the magazine and here is my progress i didn't even take it out of the hoop i'm probably going to move it a little bit but that is my progress Okay, I'll pop in a picture of what it looked like the last time, but it's coming along. I told you all I had to hop down to the house. The tree was not going to get on my nerves. 
So I hopped down to the house. Um, I had to frog a little bit in here because these are all half stitches, that white. So it got a little confusing to me, but down here is the start of some of those pumpkins that are on the bottom of the picture. And then of course, this is the tree, but I chose this fabric because it kind of had simulating like uh, clouds, just like in the model. So this is my new pink nerge. Jury's still out on this nerge, y'all. I have to, I feel like I have to keep pulling it to make it tighter. And then I keep trying to tighten it here. So I'm just gonna work on it on this um, and see how I like it in the end. But so far, I'm enjoying working on this now that I've gotten back into the groove of two over two. Um, I have a little trouble when I'm bouncing back and forth between this and my heaven and earth design because my heaven and earth design is one over one. So I think when I first picked this up, I had done some of this black here in the window on the door and it looked kind of thin and I'm like, well, what happened? I had only one strand of thread. So I had to go back and I just put another strand in and went over that one strand. Um, to make it two over two. So that's the only thing. And I only work on this on weekdays. So Monday through Thursday, if I have a little time in the evenings, this is what I pick up. Okay. So again, this is Annie's Market and this is done on 32 count Rogue Lugana in the color Moonstone. And this was a fat quarter that I got. So that's Annie's Market. She's coming along. I'm enjoying her very much. And then finally, the biggie. This is Heaven and Earth Designs, Amy Stewart, Vintage Baker. You all will be seeing this for some time to come. <laughs> I'm right in here still. So let me show you my progress. It has been slow in this area. A since I'm only primarily working on it on the weekends, the last two weekends, I got very little work on it because I had catering jobs. Um, so I got very little work the last two weekends. And so I have not made as much progress as I'd like, but I am determined to get this timer done. And as you can see, and I'll pop in a picture, hopefully before this, where I was last time, but as you can see, I'm finally getting it filled in. And I don't know if you can see, but this is actually filled in most of this. It's just hard to tell. That primary color in there is 819, which is a very, very pale pink. And it's just so much confetti, you all. A lot of confetti, but I'm almost through it. I, of course, I've got to complete the blue part, which is the easy part but I've only got this part left on the actual inside of the timer that I need to do. So I'm excited. I'm finally gonna get through this. I hope to be through this by Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving weekend, when I'm working on it, I can move forward and make a little more progress. But so far this month, I have 818 stitches done. And my grand total is 22,236 out of 301,600. Okay, 22,236 is my total. So not a whole, whole lot of progress. But again, I've been busy and I'm getting ready to at least not be as busy for the next couple of weekends and I can get more done. So that is Vintage Baker. And I probably, before I put it back on the Q-Snap, I'm probably going to continue a little more of my gritting, okay? Right in here, I must say right in here is where the next page finishes. So I have all of this here to complete for my next page finish. Oh, and before I forget, I'm going to show you this needle minder. I made this one. And it is a button that I had from high school, <laughs> believe it or not. I was, well, I'm a child of the 80s, you all. And I was a button and keychain person. 
So I always had a button on my purse, on my backpack, you know, with these little sayings on them and everything. And this will kind of give you an, a hint to my sense of humor back then. It says, mirrors don't lie. Fortunately for you, they don't laugh either. Okay, so this is an old button. I had, my husband had some kind of wire cutters. I mean, they were huge, like jaws of life. I mean, they could, they could save somebody if they were trapped in a car or something. And I found them and I cut the actual pin part off of the back. And then I bought these magnets at Michael's. And Michael's is always sending me a 40% off coupon. So that's a lot of times that's what I save my coupon for to use with these. But these are those neodyme magnets. The really strong ones so i just use two of these glue one to the back and then have one free and it goes on the other side of my fabric to hold it into place and then if you have something smaller you can get this size but they're super strong magnets neodyme magnets you can get them on amazon as well but i just get them from michael's with my 40 percent off coupon if they're like five something Okay, so with 40% off, that's pretty good. So I have a number of buttons and things that I found recently, pins. Um, I think I found a Mizzou pin that I'm gonna take the shank off the back and use it as a needle minder. Um, I sold Pamper Chef for like 10 years and I found my old Pamper Chef pin. So I said I was gonna put some magnets on the back of that. So uh, yeah, I'm still gonna buy myself as my, my finished treat. Um, some needle minders off of Etsy, but I haven't really had time to look like I want to. And I just came across this when I was over in storage and decided to make it into a needle minder. Before I go into my potential new starts and the items that I have kitted up recently, I want to tell you guys about something that happened at work, actually. We have been, our, our administration has been focused on wellness for this year for professional development. You know, normally those of you that are teachers know, you get together, you talk about the new learning styles, um, different behavior management techniques, just all kinds of things to help you become a better teacher um, in the classroom with your students. But this year, our, based on feedback that our administration received, we're focused on wellness. So they had some sessions last week on election day actually because a lot of schools are used as election sites we're usually there's no kids at school on election day but we still come in for professional development so on this particular professional development they had other teachers come up with professional development um and it did not have anything to do with teaching most of it it was just things to focus on the areas of wellness, financial, spiritual, emotional, physical, you know, all of those different um, spheres of wellness. And one of the sessions that was offered by a fellow teacher of mine, who I am co-sponsor of the Crochet Club with, was, here, let me read you the exact name of the session. It was called Connecting Through Yarn and Needlework. So basically we were just in the library. It was about 30, 35, 40 of us in the library, kind of spread out. And we were working on any type of needlework that we wanted to bring for an hour and 15 minutes. So I brought Vintage Baker with me. Um, I had my whole little setup. I had my stand, I had my light, I had, you know, everything. And I really wasn't thinking about it, but I had a lot of people come up to me and ask me a lot of questions about it. And some people were crocheting, some people were knitting. There were some other people cross stitching. Um, they had small, you know, smaller um, projects. So I was definitely one of the only ones with something so big. And from what I, the feedback I was getting so tiny, <laughs> a lot of them were like, wow, that's so small. Um, and I guess because I've been doing it so long now, it, I don't even, Think about it being different odd is not the right word but definitely different um to be working on something so small but it was just nice you all to see 
other people. And it was people from across our district. Um, we only have one high school, but we have about, I think we have two middle schools and then we have about six or seven elementary schools. And these were all levels of people. This was not just teachers. There were some, our school nurse, our high school nurse was in there. She was working on something. Um, one of the secretaries at the elementary school that my son goes to, she was there. So it was just nice for all of us to be in the same space talking about stitching and seeing the variety of projects that were represented. Um, and just to chit chat a little bit with other people. Um, I kind of had to be at the table by myself because of the way I had to set up with the light and, and the stand and everything, but I was nearby other people. Um, one of my friends, she was working on the temperature. It was a temperature like Afghan for one of her kids. Um, and she was using the temperatures of every day of the year of their birth. I thought that was so neat because I know um, Stitching Mommy has all the temperature cross stitch patterns. And I've been kind of trying to decide was if I wanted to try one of those. And that kind of gave me the idea that I could go back to my kids year of birth and actually find the temperatures for those days and do them in either the butterfly or the tree. Those are the two that I have been looking on Stitching Mommy's site that I thought I might like to try. So I just was wanted to share something that happened that was different for us. Um, and those of you that are my fellow teachers know, you don't get those kind of professional developments too often. So it was nice. Um, we had three different sessions we could choose. And my one of the other ones I chose was Dancing for Health. And it basically was the line dances. So Cha Cha Slide, Fantasy by Mariah Carey, that's my favorite. Um, we were just learning, teaching all those different uh, line dances. And there were a lot of people there that didn't know them. So those of us that did know them helped them out. You know, it was just nice. And again, a whole different group of people that were there. So I just thought I'd share that. Um, I do like camaraderie in our community. So that was a nice change of pace for me to be able to connect with other people here because I don't have any real stitchy friends locally. So that was just nice to see what other people are working on. OK, um, let's go into potential new starts, things that I have actually kitted up. Um, I mentioned sweater weather last time. I'm still I finally placed my one, two, three stitch order. It's a pretty big order, so I will have some investments to share next time. But my last two threads that I need for that are in route. So I'm looking forward to getting those. But let me show you what I did kit up and fabric and all. This first one is a free Shannon and Christine, Shannon Christine designs from her Facebook page. And I will put a link to that down below if you are not a member of her Facebook page. But it's called Thankful and Blessed. Um, this is just a black and white copy, but I do have it pulled up here on my tablet what it looks like um, in color and if you go to her Facebook page you will see a number of people that have already completed um, candy the six four I'm sorry the six is it six one four I think she's the six four six one four stitcher is candy and I know she recently got it done um, and there are a couple other people that have finished it as well so I'm looking forward to starting that. I just found some antique blue, um, I believe this is Joblin 28 count, in my stash. Just a small piece that I got when I used to work at a needle workshop. And I just, I found all these small pieces, you all, and I just been surging. I've been surging all week because I had to have that um, serger out to work on my daughter's dress. So I just started gathering up all these little small pieces that I want to use for different things and uh, got them surged and ready to go. So that is Thankful and Blessed by Shannon Christine Designs. And again, you can get it for free if you are a member on her Facebook page. And again, I will link that below. The second one I'm going to work on, and this is going to be on this piece of linen. I believe it's a 28 count. It's either 28 or 32. But again, a little scrap that I found in Surge. But this is Cozy Christmas Wishes. And this is a Lizzie Kate. It's a free design. I'm just going to show it real fast. But it's got a big cup of cocoa or something. But um, Cozy Christmas Wishes. It has 
sampler threads, General Arts, as the threads, but it also has a DMC and an anchor conversion on here. I actually have some of these General Arts threads, so I pulled those, and then the rest I'm just going to do in DMC. I'm just going to make a little ornament or a little pillow out of that but it is cozy christmas wishes i think i got it directly from the lizzie kate website um but i'll put a link down below if i can find where it is and where i got it from so that's that one and then this next one i'm really looking forward to doing it this is going to be my stitch for the next couple of weeks i'm going to work on it when my son is playing tennis and i'm going to work on it during lunch at work but this is from sherry the colorado cross stitcher um you can find her on youtube she's a floss tuber and then i will put a link below to her website she is in colorado but she's actually from st louis and actually the kirkwood area which i work and i um, enjoy hearing her stories about kirkwood and I, I always like to listen and i always think oh yeah i know where that is um but i enjoy her channel very much um she has a shop in colorado um but she is a stitcher and that is primarily what she talks about on her youtube is her stitching which i really appreciate but this is a free chart from her it is called thankful and i just love that little colorful turkey so this is what i'm going to start this week during my lunch hour at work but it is very cute and if you just go to her colorado cross stitcher site and go to her free charts you can find it and you it's an immediate download um so i'm looking forward to it it only has eight colors all dmc and i have chosen this 18 count ada that i again had in my stash this is my starting point found out where i want to start i know i'm not going to use all of this it's not that big but i'm just going to leave it in one big piece so it'll fit better in my q snap but 18 count Ada. I, I like working on 18 count Ada. The other full coverage I did before I started working on Heaven and Earth Designs, it was done on a white 18 count Ada and I enjoyed working on that. But this doesn't have any back stitching in it. So that was the main reason I went ahead and used an Ada. Okay. And I have one more that I have kitted up and I don't have the fabric out here or anything, but this is another freebie. Um, this is the Poutini Boutini Please Enter Your Pin freebie from 2022. And I guess she has a number of freebies from time to time every year. But this is the one that I'm going to do. And it's Please Enter Your Pin. And I am actually going to make it into a pin cushion. Oops, a little glare. Sorry, y'all. Um, but I'm going to make, I'm probably going to make one for my coworkers. Both of them sew. We're all fax teachers. So um, I think I'm going to make one for each of them for Christmas, maybe, if I can get it done. Um, so that is Please Enter Your Pin, and it is a freebie from Poutini Poutini. And you can find her on Instagram, okay? It's uh, paola.poutini Poutini is her Instagram, okay? And a lot of these free charts. Now, I heard about the Colorado Cross Stitcher one from Sherry on her floss tube. But these other ones, there's a, a site that I wanted to share with you all. It's actually a Facebook page. And if you're not familiar with it, it's Needle Free For All on Facebook. And Sandra is the administrator of that site. It's her page. And she does a great job of just gathering free charts from all over the place that you can actually download most of them immediately. Um, and get to work. So if you are somebody that's on a budget, um, that's a great place to start. If you want smalls, the majority of the things that she features happen to be smalls. Yes, she has some bigger items, but the majority of them are smalls because that's what most designers give away free are small charts. So um, if you're looking for some smalls or you're looking for something that's more economical for you and free, head on over to Needle Free For All on Facebook and again I will put that link down below and I know Sandra is on YouTube but I don't think she does floss too but I do I have seen her comment on uh, people's um, videos so I do know she has a presence here on YouTube so head on over to her page 
I know she would be grateful to have you and become um, like her page and subscribe to her page over on Facebook. Okay. All right. Up next, I have a quilt that I'm going to share with you. It is called Lemon Squares. Okay. And the company that it's from is called Fresh Lemon Quilts. Um, I don't have my printout for it because I finished this quilt quite some time ago, but I will insert a picture here of what it looked like on her site. Okay. Um, I love this quilt. I love a good square and a square. So that is what I am going to show you. I'm going to have Layla come out and hold it up with me. This is the quilt that is currently on my bed. It is primarily gray, yellow, and black. And the majority of the fabrics I got from Hancock Fabrics when that was still in existence. So I'll be right back and prepare to show you this full size quilt. Okay, this is Lemon Squares. Okay, and Layla's gonna help me hold it. It's huge. This is a king size. So we're gonna try to get as much of it in the frame as we can. Hold it up, buddy. So this is Lemon Squares. Straighten it out, Lay. Pull, pull, there you go. So this is Lemon Squares. Again, this is a king size, orange, black, I'm sorry, yellow, black, and gray. Hold it, yeah, hold it straight, hold it straight. Come down this, come down my way so we can pan it. But this is only half of it, you all, it's huge. Okay. Go ahead and flip it. But lots of different prints. I collected these prints for a couple of years before I actually made the quilt. But I love a square and a square. I just feel like you have a lot of things you can do with a square and a square. And then on the back, to make sure it's just a solid yellow back, except I had some of this left. And I think I, I, think I placed this in a quilt show at one time. So I put this on one side and uh, this is where the hanging sleeve was. But then I put the extra blocks that I had left over. I just added them in there. And this is also how I know which part of the bed to put it on. So again, this is Lemon Squares. Um, it's currently on my bed in my bedroom. So that's my one quilt for today. All right. So that was my Lemon Square, Square and a Square. You all, I love Square and a Square quilts. Um, they're so simple yet so diverse. You can do so many things. I like, I tend to gravitate more of scrappy looks with quilts. Um, I like a variety of fabrics. Uh, I think the double iris chain that I showed you all last week, I think that's the only quilt I've ever made that only had like three fabrics in it. Okay. And I, I literally, I think it only had three fabrics in it. I've never done that. <laughs> I enjoy a lot of variety in my fabrics. So I tend to do things that could be for scrappy quilts, um, but I like them to be a little more organized. My mom, I'm looking forward to showing her quilts to you all. She calls uh, the kind of quilts I like miss because she said there's so much going on as far as uh, the patterns that I choose and then the fabrics that I choose. Um, and that's one thing you all will notice. We have very different quilting styles, um, which is, it's fine. It's totally fine. Um, but she, she likes smaller pieces. I like bigger pieces. So we have very different quilting styles, but I'm looking forward to you all seeing the magnificent things that she does with her quilts. Okay. Last thing is the homecoming dress. Okay. I will start putting in pictures here of the final dress. Um, I thought it turned out great. I had one thing, and you all know how we are as makers. We tend to 
pick things and be a little more nitpicky about our own work. Well, there were a couple of things I definitely would have done differently. I would have lengthened the sleeve a little longer. I did lengthen it, but when I attached it to the dress, um, because remember this was a different sleeve. If you saw my last video, I kind of described what I did with her dress this time. But the sleeve that I inserted, it was a completely different sleeve. It did not go with that pattern. So it turned out the shape of the sleeve in order for me to make it fit, I had to scoot it in some. So I lost an inch or two up here when I made it fit into the armhole of that particular dress slash top. Cause I also told you all it was supposed to be a top, but I lengthened it past her hips to be a dress. Um, so when I did that, I lost some of the length on the sleeve and I probably could have redone it. But if, if you all are anything like me, once you get to see the finish line, you do not want to go backwards. So I said, no, we're going to make this work. Um, and it turned out fine because it ended up the corsage, the young man brought for her that she went with her date is a friend of hers. It covered up that gap where her sleeve wasn't quite long enough um, to come and touch her wrist like I would have liked it to. And she was fine with it. She's like, no, mom, it's fine. It's fine. It's going to be hot anyway. Okay. Um, but I, you know, being, you know, the person that made it, oh, I wish it would have been a little longer. But then when he put the corsage on her, I was like, oh, that takes care of it because it closed that gap that was between her hand and the end of the sleeve. So it worked out great. Hopefully you guys can see them in the pictures. Um, it it was really well received by her. She loved it. Y'all, but I had glitter everywhere. Do you know I'm still got glitter? I done went through pages and pages. What is that? The roller that you get the lint off, the lint roller. I, I done went through pages and pages on that thing trying to get this glitter off. It's on everything. My husband said just last night, I think I still got glitter on me <laughs> in the bedroom. So glitter was literally everywhere at the dance. People were hugging her on purpose so they could get glitter on them. That's how much it was glitter was everywhere. So the other thing that I discovered, I think for that particular pattern, I should have had a four-way stretch material. And I think this was only a two-way stretch. Because when I was placing it on the pattern, I had to make sure I had to make sure that grain or actually that the stretch was going around her body, not necessarily the length of her body. I wanted to make sure it was gonna stretch around her body. Um, and the other thing I discovered was she needs a sway back adjustment just like I do, okay? We are not, I mean, as you can see, we're built up completely different. She's built like her father, tall, lanky, um, but she's starting to get some hips, okay? She's starting to get some curves and she got a little shelf sitting out in the back. And I'm gonna see if I can insert a picture here of what I'm talking about. There was a lot of fabric that was gathered at the base of her spine and it was just loose and I have the same problem. And a lot of black women I think have that same problem because the waist comes in, but then you got this little booty poking out in the back. And the way the patterns are usually made, it's not a smooth fit. And if you have to do a sway back adjustment, usually there's a pool of fabric in the back that you got to eliminate. And I'm just glad I have the skills to do that because she did have quite a bit. And if you look at the picture of the back of her dress, I was not able to eliminate it completely. But hey, she's dancing. She's moving around. Nobody's going to be critiquing her back. But I had to take at least two inches of fabric that had just pooled right at the bottom. I could pinch it out and then I just recut the pattern minus those two inches and it looked a lot better um, in the end. So it worked out. She loved it. I loved it. It's a whole thing for the kids to all go to this park and take pictures with their friends before the dance. So I'm going to, if you go to my Instagram, you will see a picture of my husband lurking in the background of the group picture of Layla and her friends. Um, he and Trent were hilarious when it came to the fact that Layla was going somewhere with a boy. Trent talked to him. Trent 
goes to football games and hangs out with Layla all the time. So he knows all the big kids. And Trent said, I talked to him, mama. I told him he better treat my sister like a queen. I hollered, y'all. He don't play about Layla. And neither does her daddy. Before we drove off, because we were leaving them at the park. She and all her friends were all riding together. And my husband called the young man over to the window. Come here. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Lord. He said, now you look out for these ladies. He said, yes, sir. <laughs> so she got through her first sort of date. Um, like I said, they're friends. They're good friends. They hang out at school and stuff. So it went good. She was beautiful. And like I said, they all, all these people at this park, I saw all the, a lot of the dresses. She didn't look like anybody else. And I know that was the goal. Um, that was always my goal when I was her age. I just didn't want to look like anybody else. And she did not. Um, I didn't even see anybody with anything close to that color. And uh, the style of it, completely different. So she did. She made a good call. And I'm just glad I was able to execute it for her. So there's the update. If you want to see um, more detailed pictures, I did put more detailed pictures up on my Instagram. So you can take a look at those. And I also kind of talked about or showed more pictures of the process. Um, but thanks for you, all the comments about last year's dress. Um, but I think this year's dress was a success. And I, I, I don't know which one I like better. I think I like this one better. Um, the execution of this one, I think, went a little more smoothly even though I had to make just as many adjustments, but I think this one went a little more smoothly. So thank you for all your kind comments on her and uh, her dresses. So I appreciate you. Um, that's about it, you all. Let me talk a little bit about plans. Um, I mentioned in my last video project bags that I was gonna have for sale. Um, I am gonna do that. When they are live, I will make a post on my Instagram page. Um, so just let you know, that's where you should look for it. Um, I'm going to have a birthday giveaway at my next video. I am not, I don't think I've ever been a really big birthday person. Um, I enjoy my birthday. I get stuff for my birthday, but I've never really made a big deal about it. And I think that's because it's almost always Thanksgiving weekend. So it kind of gets lost in the shuffle and Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I mean, and since I've been grown and had my own family, I've done, I usually cook most of the time if we're in town. The last two years though, we went out of town. So this year I'm going to cook, I'm going to invite my mom and I think one of my sisters is going to be in town. So I'm going to invite her and her kids over. Um, but my dad and his wife have other plans. So we're just going to be over here in this apartment. We're going to get some TV trays out. We're going to make it work. Um, but I'm going to do a birthday giveaway. Um, it will be, that's probably when I'm going to do my next video right after Thanksgiving. Um, I want to pick out a fancy lady sometime within the next couple of weeks so I can get it ordered and get it going for New Year's. Um, I have looked at a number of people's mirabilia or fancy lady um, I guess you call them parades, maybe. Um, I know Needleberry Stitcher. She's really the one. I'm going to blame her. She's really the one that's made me wanted to do a mirabilia because I watched her parade in one of her early videos. And I was just like, you know what? I can't believe I've never done one of these. And I've got a, I've got it rounded down to two or three that I want to do. But then I saw these Bella Filipinas and I really like those. The coloring um, of those I really like. And James, the PH Stitcher, if you are not watching him, he's got magnificent work in Mirabilia and Bella Filipinas. And he even kind of talks about the history of some of the v Bella Filipinas because he is located in the Philippines. Um, so he is more in touch with what the symbolism behind those charts are and who the deities are and things of that nature. So if you're not watching him, go and check him out. He's really knowledgeable and he just has a plethora of charts and whips. I mean, he's he's plowing through these fancy ladies and that's mainly 
what he stitches. Um, he do, does have a few hades here and there, but it's mostly fancy ladies and he does beautiful work. Um, so between those two and I've looked at other people's parades, I'm going to do one in 2023. So I'm trying to figure out which ones I want to do. I want to do at least one of each, one Bella and one Mira. So I'm trying to dot, round it down to which ones I'm going to actually go ahead and purchase. So I'm looking forward to that. That's one of the things I want to get done. And then um, I want to FFO some of these things, especially, you know, like the baked goods I just finished. I've got my carousel horses that I did. I want to get that framed. And I think I have found a frame that I want to get at Michael's. So I just want to get those things done. And then finally, investments. I made a big one, two, three stitch order. I got some fancy flosses. I got a couple of charts that I've had my eye on all year that I wanted to go ahead and get. And then I got some fabrics. Um, they're mostly neutral fabrics, but I do have a plan for the fabrics that I got. So I will share that in my next video along with a birthday giveaway. So I think that's it. I will not be coming back before you until after Thanksgiving. So I hope you have a blessed and thankful Thanksgiving. Um, I am blessed to know you all. I am blessed to be here before you on a regular basis. I am blessed to read your comments and I'm just thankful to be a part of the Floss Tube community. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to make more stitchy friends that I do not currently have present physically. Okay, so being able to have other people to talk about stitchy things with has definitely been great for me for these last few months. And I'm looking forward to extending that and getting to know some of you even more during 2023. So um, thank you. I appreciate you. If you have not subscribed, I would love for you to do that. Um, again, follow me over on Instagram so you'll know when I'm live on my Etsy shop. And again, I'll put below the name of my Etsy shop. So you can just go over there when those project bags are live. And I'll give you a heads up. Most of them are probably this time going to be Christmas, a few fall, um, a few random other things, but mostly Christmas. Those are mostly the fabrics that I pulled for this time. So, and, and depending on how this one goes, we might do it every few months or so. So thank you all again. So glad to see and hear from you all. Um, keep commenting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep trying my best to comment on you all's comments. Um, but thank you. Uh, I appreciate you. And I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. Stay safe out there and be blessed.